Hi again. Here we are with part seven of the red tree. And this is Karen Alari. Well, in this part, we're going to do some, some of the fun stuff here. We're going to work on some foliage and some nice colors. And we're starting off with um, a green here. And it's blizzard crimson, uh, sorry, um, ultramarine blue, phthalo blue, cadmium yellow. And I don't know if you can tell, but I have it very thick on my brush. And I'm, again, just lightly uh, rolling it and touching it to the canvas. This is much the way I created the foliage in the red tree behind it. And you know, when we put together this reference photo um, and we're thinking about what we wanted to do with it, uh, one of the things I mentioned was I, I really like this scene particularly because I like the way this green bush played up against the the red tree and um, so that's what we're laying in now we've pushed both the green and the red to be more vivid bright colors and, um, and now as we lay that green against the red it really pops because those are complementary colors um, on the color wheel it's kind of funny if you put those two colors together you're going to end up with a very dull gray but if you leave the two complementary colors uh, bright and you lay them up against each other they just almost vibrate the contrast is so great really adds a lot of interest to your painting to do that now I'm laying in some of this grass in the um, center part of the road we had this little little tiny bit of grass with some daisies growing in it. So I'm laying down the, this sort of mid-green and I'm going to come back with other colors. Adding some ultramarine blue to it now, darkening it up a little bit. This will give us a shadow color. Remember the light is coming from the left side, so this right side of the bush is going to be darker. Just tapping in um, there, this these are mostly blackberry bushes, which grow all over here in Oregon, and um, they the vines come come out and trail out. So I'm tapping in a trailing vine there. Don't want to paint individual leaves. I just want to give the what you would call, I guess, the gesture of the plant, the the overall shape and the direction it grows and and what it looks like. Coming in with these. I'm holding my brush uh, firmly to the canvas on the bottom of where the grasses are and then flipping up and releasing my pressure. So the top edge of the brush stroke is light and uh, the bottom edge of it is a little, a little more dense. Gives a feeling of grass growing. Adding in that shadow color to the bottom of the the little row of, of grass and flowers that goes up to the middle. So trying to keep it loose and natural. Get that nice pretty green color in there. This whole area I'll put more colors on top, but that's just the way I like to do it is to layer the one color on top of the other. Added some red to that and some blue to that to make it a dark shadow color. Again, we don't want any other of the shadow colors to be as dark as the shadow that we did on our red tree because that'll be our darkest dark. This little bush is, creates some shadow underneath it in the sunlight. Just laying those in. We'll this shadow side. It's again. It's just that back and forth. A little shadow, and then bring a little more of lighter branches back on top. Here I'm picking up a pretty light color, some cad yellow, ultramarine blue, to get back into that bright green color. This will be the very brightest of the, of the green leaves that are catching the sun. Just rolling that on in a, in a very random way. And it's, it's 
that little process of getting laying down a random brush stroke so it, it has a real loose feel to it. You can always come back and adjust an edge or two, but you want to make sure that you leave those those random edges that that the brush was able to, to lay down. Kind of get some darker shadows under the bottom there to um, anchor those grasses to the ground. Add some cadmium red, ultramarine blue. This makes that um, kind of a bluer shadow that I'm going for. Every, every different bush um, that you come across is going to how it's going to be a different color and the shadows of it are going to be a different color and the shadows themselves are going to be laying on different color areas so you just got to be careful to continue to vary your colors not just pick one shadow color and then go all over the whole painting with it that's a kind of nice thing about acrylics because it's going to dry out you have to change your color up a little bit as you go so here I'm just very, very lightly taking that shadow color and brushing it in, in certain areas of, um, of the road. And it's not going to stay like that, but if I lay down that shadow, then I can come back and lay down some light on top of it. Taking my little mister bottle there and just misting my paint to keep it moist as the process goes. I have to do that every... Um, every hour or so the whole process of painting this painting took a little over two hours with all the uh, videoing and everything and so in that time period the paint on your canvas is gonna start to uh, dry up a little bit putting in this darker gray purpley gray um, to show the dip of the road the center of, of the tire tracks I kept all the road colors on this one purpley. I didn't. I didn't want to go straight flat gray because uh, I just don't think it's very interesting. And also because I pushed the colors of the tree and the colors of the foliage to be brighter colors, so that means I can also the the difference between the brightest part of the tree and the gray of the road stays the same. If, if this tree was very dull, I'd have to go very dull on the road or the road would take um, draw your eye more than the tree because the color would be more vivid, if that makes sense. Same thing with values. Everything is comparing one area to another and you decide. You're the artist. You decide how bright you want to go, how colorful you want to go, but once you've made that decision, then all the, the um, relationships between the different areas have to be the same. Rolling on some um, darker, I had come in in this area to the right in the in the field and put in some of my redder color. That was something that we were going to do too with the reference photo. We need, we need some weight in this right corner to balance that big red dark tree. So we we're going to put some brighter colors, some darker colors there to create that balance more so than was in the reference. Making a very light grayed down color here. Um, put some yellow in it. When you have a purple color like I'm using, adding yellow is going to make it more gray because yellow is the complementary color to the purple. Just dusting it back and forth following the contour of the road, barely touching that uh, brush to the canvas to get this feeling of dirt and pebbles moving up the road. Looking for, looking at my reference photo and then just picking out those colors, the different colors I want to use. And when I push colors, when I talk about pushing colors, um, I don't generally go completely different than the reference photo. I just look at the reference photo, and if I see a hint of 
a direction that color is going, more red, more purple, more blue, I'll just push that color and, and make it a little more so. Pretty happy with the way the road is going at this point. You can really just continue to endlessly layer on there until it makes you happy. I'm switching brushes here to my liner brush. I want to put just a tangle of weeds and bushes in this area on the right hand side. I want it to be very loose and undefined. I don't want it any more de definition there than I have in my red tree because that's the focal point. And I use this method a lot. If you take your liner brush, rigger brush, and um, brush it in the paint and, and if you brush back and forth, back and forth, um, like I'm doing there, you can get a nice sharp edge on it. And if you just hold it very loosely in your hand and flick it, you can get a, a sense of tangle of bushes without defining any particular area too distinctly. And this is where my music helps again when I'm trying to do these areas where I'm just creating movement. I think it um, by moving your hand quickly and loosely and having fun with it, I think that translates into your painting and adds movement and lightness to the painting. If you define every edge very uh, intently, then you end up having a very intent painting, very somber painting. Varying the colors here, I'm adding, um, added some of my Quinn Gold some cad red and some white to give me a warmer light. See, I'm going back and forth with that, trying to uh, maintain that very sharp edge and um, get that feeling of the tangle of bushes. This is really the fun part. I use the end of my rigger brush to do this too. And you'll see in a little while, I also use the side of the brush, much like I do uh, with my round brush to make a grass, where I hold it firmly on the bottom and then flick it up. I added some random dark marks, like the top of seed heads of bushes, of weeds. And then once you get that random mark in there, I can go back as I just did with a lighter color just to add a little sunlit side to that seed head. You don't want to cover it up completely because you want to maintain that random brush stroke that you got on there in the first place. Moving to some Quinn Gold, some white, a very light grassy color. I'm trying to get a sharp edge on my... You have to get the right amount of paint and um, the paint has to be wet enough. So um, I I don't know if I did it this time, but you often will add a little bit of water to the paint. You want it pretty runny uh, when you're trying to do these kind of brush strokes. Adding th that little light side to those random marks that I made. Adding a few more random marks. It's starting to develop just a feel of grass along the road, catching the light a little bit. little sparkles and some in the bush too where the lights catching that and using that same brush and some trying to get some little light right along the edge where that grass is laying up against the weeds on the side of the road here's why I'm using the side of my brush and flicking upwards also gives a very random look. Firm pressure on the bottom of the stroke and then lightening up and getting a look of grasses there. So there we are for part seven. Uh, just two more parts and I hope you'll join me for part eight.